Yo, what's up Giants fans? It is Kush back at again with the fifth, that's right, fifth preview video of the season. The one in three Cowboys. Both of these teams are just, you know, a game or a game and a half out of the lead of the division. Which kind of goes to show you how bad the NFC East is. I mean, this is probably a historically bad um, division right now. And we have two teams that honestly I didn't think would be that competitive with each other you know going into week four last week i thought that the giants were done coming off that 49ers game and that being said let me do a quick recap recap of that week four matchup against the rams where the giants surprised not only me but i think everybody else they played a hell of a game against the rams man the defense really showed up and showed out the offense was still trash but got something going in the run game but the thing that kept us in this game for sure was the Giants defense. We went up against the Rams offense that was top 10 in the league, seventh overall, seventh in passing, and third overall rushing at the time we went up against each other. The Giants defense came out and played an, an elite level. And to be honest with you, they played a perfect defense except for that one Cooper Cup play, which ended up, you know, helping the Rams win the game. That blown coverage on Cooper Cup where uh, there was basically no single high safety out there and that's what allowed the man to get down all the way into the end zone. But other than that, they played a damn near perfect game. You take away that one singular play and the Giants defense held the Rams offense to 10 points. We hold the Rams offense to like maybe 150 passing yards because I think that was like maybe a 55 yard touchdown. We hold them to uh, under 100 yards rushing, even with that passing play, because it's a passing play, we still held the third overall rushing offense in the league to under 100 yards of rushing offense on the day. And of course, the Giants offense, as usual, just could not capitalize on the opportunities that they had. Graham Gano, the automatic, once again, MVP of the Giants, at least so far, scored all of our points, all nine of them. There were, you know, a couple of coaching mishaps, for example, one fourth and 11, I think, where I judge try to convert if I'm not mistaken he probably should have taken the field goal there and then maybe the score is like 12 to 10 instead of you know uh, I think it was 9 to 10 and that was before the Rams scored a touchdown anyway and maybe that changes how we approach the game on the last drive where Daniel Jones did his best to keep it alive you know what I'm saying throughout the game he did his best to keep the offense moving because the offensive line was hot and cold it had one really good drive before the second half when Matt Pitt stepped in. The second half started again. Matt Pitt was out camp and was back in, which I still didn't understand. They were hot and cold again. They got it going with the run game a little bit somewhat. But, but you know, at other times, they also just could not protect DJ. Um, DJ made moves with his feet. And then he made the game-ending interception, which is completely on him. He cost us the game at the end there with that interception to the Rams. Here's the thing, though. If we take that field goal and it's 12 to 10 probably not behaving in that you know hero mode type of thing let me go over the injury report real quick here for the cowboys first of all they got Dorrance armstrong did not practice in wednesday you know he's defensive end tyrone crawford defensive lineman did not practice trayvon diggs cornerback full practice demarcus lawrence defensive end full practice uh joe looney center did not practice teron smith uh, tackle did not practice now out of all of these guys I of course I expect uh, both Diggs and Lawrence to play uh, on this Sunday I ex fully expect either one if not both of these offensive linemen to go and play on Sunday I'll be very surprised if they don't because the Cowboys offensive line has actually been very average this year not exactly up to snuff as you know one of those top five lines lines in the year I, I think they're gonna be good though I haven't really seen any big news about the Cowboys missing pieces like that and then on the Giants you got a couple names that were here last week in Adrian Colbert and Jabril Peppers they're both in limited practice it would be great if we could see Peppers again Kyler Fackrell also in limited practice we see him we saw him went down in the game against the Rams but he came back which is why I think he'll be good to go on Sunday and even if he doesn't I would love for my boy Marcus Golden to get another chance to get in there and I think we're fine there O'Shane Zimenez same position as Fackrell did not practice on Wednesday so we'll see how that goes but I'm not too worried because quantity wise we're pretty good at the depth um, of outside linebacker this came out the defense is now proving to be one of the better ones if not one of the best ones in the NFL and the offense is still struggling and we're going up against the Dallas Cowboys team where it's kind of a funny matchup because when our defense and the Dallas Cowboys offense is going to be on the field, you're going to see something great. But when our offense and the Dallas Cowboys defense is on the field, you're going to see something terrible. Things first, since I've been gushing over it, let me go over to the Giants defense and the Dallas Cowboys offense. 
And you know what? Let us let us give credit to Patrick Graham for a second, man. This man is low-key one of the best defensive coordinators in the league right now, you know? Other than the head honcho himself, Joe Judge, of course, the, the only person on this new coaching staff that was really kind of an unproven commodity, that everybody else you had a semblance of an idea what you would get. Jason Garrett, we all expected something completely different from him, I'm getting into him later, but you know what you had in Jason Garrett, or at least you thought you knew what you had in Jason Garrett. You know what you got in Thomas McGahee, the special teams coordinator. I could go on and on. Tyke Tolbert, the wide receivers coach. You know what you got in a bunch of these position coaches from college because they had success at the college level and whatnot. Patrick Graham, all we knew about him was that he was with us as our defensive line coach in 2016, which was, by the way, the last time the Giants had a very dominant defense. Difference is, though, I think this defense is better than 2016's. Because that 2016 Giants defense didn't really start to get the ball rolling until like midway through the season. This defense from the beginning, from game one, has had the ball rolling, you know what I'm saying? And you you know, other than that, he was a, with uh, Green Bay as a linebackers coach, did well there. That's how we know Martinez was going to be good. Shout out to Blake Martinez, by the way, who I'll get into a little bit uh, later. And then, you know, he was with the Dolphins last year as their defensive coordinator, but the Dolphins defense last year was pretty bad. So you didn't really know what you were getting in him. And here he is. He produces currently the 13th best defense in the NFL. And I just want to say, by the way, this is something amazing considering we're still missing our two starting safeties and we don't have a legit number two cornerback yet. Although Ryan Lewis last game, Props to Ryan Lewis, man. He kind of came out of nowhere and he handled himself well enough. I think he's going to be a serviceable cornerback to be out there. You know, I saw he was playing in, in both the slot and also at second outside corner a little bit. Maybe he's the guy for the rest of the season, but whatever the case is, he was the best person we had out there so far, not named James Bradbury. But, you know, without those pieces and with a, quite honestly, no, no real second middle linebacker, who, by the way, shout out to another player in Tay Crowder, who had a good amount of snaps um, against the Rams on Sunday. He came in a little bit to spell Devontae Downs. And honestly, Tay Crowder looked good. He almost had an interception. He was, you know, seeing a good amount of places over the field. And he looked alert, very agile, very athletic. Better than what we got from Devontae Downs, at least. But he's producing without, you know, with some missing pieces. The 13th overall defense in the NFL, simply the 8th overall passing defense, and that's probably the most surprising thing to me. I don't know how in the world the Giants are having such success in the passing game on the defensive side of the ball, because honestly, we should be a lot lower than this. Really, all we have in the secondary right now is James Bradbury, who I've said since week two looks to be like the best cornerback in the league this year. James Bradbury is playing out of his goddamn mind, bro. Bradbury is a lockdown corner this year. He looks really good through the first four weeks of the season. Other than him and other than Logan Ryan, who honestly, other than a couple of plays, you know, throughout the entire season so far, Logan Ryan's been kind of missing because he's still getting used to the playbook and whatnot. There's really nobody else out there on that defense. Darnay Holmes is a rookie. I've hyped him up. My hype seems to be a little overhyped because he's still struggling. You know, the rookie struggle, so I'm not exactly putting the guy down. But he's not, you know, performing like these other two are. Definitely not like Bradbury is. And somehow, someway, that secondary is getting the job done. The linebacking core is getting the job done. Like I mentioned, Martinez earlier, who, just like Bradbury, is playing out of his mind. Blake Martinez is currently, I'm sure if you go on any site, either a top 10 or top 5 player at that middle linebacker position. And I'm, yo, I'm, I told y'all this would happen. I told y'all from the moment we signed him. Giants fans did not like the signing. I loved the signing. The dude was an absolute monster in Green Bay, you know, a tackling machine, despite the fact that he was completely misusing Green Bay. And I came out and I said he was misusing Green Bay before Martinez himself said that because you could see it. He was forced to be a tackling machine in Green Bay. And that one year that Graham was there, he kind of was allowed to flex his wings a little bit more. He could go back and check, had his best coverage year over there as well. And right now, Martinez is looking like one of the best middle linebackers in the league. And I love the fact that we have him and Brad in their primes on our defense and that is really a big reason as to why we're performing so good in the passing game the rushing this of defense 
and this was the biggest jump from last week to this week last week we were ranked at 24th rushing defense understandably so because we really haven't been able to stop the rush you know despite the fact that we got d law we got thomas and we got leonard williams on the d line because we held the ramps to just like i think it was maybe 70 yards overall rushing not sure i'll probably toss it up in post editing the giants are now the 11th ranked rushing defense in the nfl a huge jump that's a huge improvement from what we were beforehand and god damn that's just an overall defensive effort man because against the rams it, we saw some good tackling we saw some really good wrap up tackling from this defense you know you were catching the ball and that was it the giants were only you going anywhere man this tackle rate in the nfl we're right around the middle of the pack so we're doing good there we got 10 sacks on the day on the nfl here so we're that's right around 12th in the league 35 pressures which ranks us a bit lower so right around middle of the pack there shout out to Kyler Fackrell who had a good game and has been having good games for the Giants so in the pass rush we're, we're right around average as well what does this spell for us I think we can do well against the Dallas Cowboys offense and let me talk about the Dallas Cowboys offense real quick one of the best in the NFL Currently the third overall offense in the NFL, just behind Green Bay and Seattle, putting up over 2,000 yards on the season already and 126 points. They are the number one passing offense in the league by far. Dak Prescott is going crazy once again this year. Not so good in the rushing defense, just 23rd overall. But that's besides the point. This offense on paper is supposed to be great and they are great. Dak Prescott. Mari Cooper, Michael Gallup, CD Lamb, Ezekiel Elliott. That builds one of the best offenses in the league, and that's quite simply what they've been. Here's the thing I have confidence that the Giants defense can hold them to around 20, 21 points, which would be a great accomplishment because they're average, th averaging 31 and a half points a game right now. But we did the same thing to the Rams. The Rams were averaging around 30 points, and we held them to just 17. The reason I would say the Cowboys score a bit more than the Rams is because as great as our passing defense has been, I mentioned it's low-key a little bit of an anomaly. We can't, I don't think we could hold down all three of these receivers. With the Rams last week, we just had to hold down two, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, and somehow, some way, we managed to do that. I think we could hold down two of these three receivers, but not all three, because we don't have that third cornerback, you know what I'm saying? Whoever it is, it's going to be in the slot. Like I said, Darnay, he's a rookie, so actually, it might be Darnay matched up against CD, I think. Don't quote me on that. That would be a very interesting rookie matchup, but whatever the case is, one of these receivers are going to get free this game. I 100% expect, expect that to happen, and it's not even a knock on the Giants defense, it's just you know just how good the cowboys offense has been like the reason the team is this bad is not because of their offense it's because their defense is atrocious which i'll get into in a couple minutes here but their offense has been putting up points game in and game out mike mccarthy might not be the best head coach right now but whatever he's doing on the offensive side there for dallas is working out he's making dak look like an mvp type quarterback you know although they're now winning now let me get into that talk about the Dallas Cowboys defense and the Giants offense I think our defense is going to hold us in this game because I believe they proved themselves against the Rams you know I've been wrong before though because I said the same thing going into the 49ers game offense against the Cowboys defense which is weird because this is the two you know the two teams weakest parts the Cowboys defense is currently the worst in the NFL at 32nd overall very understandable considering that they've been putting up over 30 points a game and still somehow losing that means opposing teams are putting up like 40 points a game their passing defense is 23rd overall so in that bottom half not quite terrible but definitely not good or average and their rushing defense is 31st overall which is definitely going to be the weakest rushing the defense that giants are going up against so we do have a little bit of hope a little ray of sunshine that the rushing attack can carry over from last game against the Rams. It wasn't great. It got going just a little bit. Devontae Freeman was getting consistent rushes. Uh, Wayne Gallman was like the main runner there getting a couple of big gashes. Maybe that, you know, running back duo, maybe even trio, if they do use Lewis again, can actually get some yards on their own, 100 yards on their own. Because while we got 100 yards on the ground last week, a good part of that was Daniel Jones. But this defense is very, very terrible. I just... It's just that the Giants offense is so bad. And let me read off their offensive ratings to you. We are the worst offense in the league. The 32nd overall offense. The 27th passing offense. And the 31st rushing 
uh, offense in the league. So you got the literally the two worst offenses. I mean, the, the worst offense going up against the worst defense in the league. It, it's kind of funny. But we haven't been able to score no matter what. I mean, for crying out loud, we haven't scored a touchdown in two games. So forgive me if I have a little bit of um, doubt in the fact that we could actually take advantage of this Dallas Cowboys defense. Uh, one thing people got to remember is while they are the worst defense in the league, I really do think that's where they truly are. Also, keep in mind that they've gone up against some of the best offenses in the league. You know what I'm saying? They've gone up against Seattle, who's the second best offense in the league. They've gone up against the Falcons, who, you know, they're in the top half. The Rams, who are also in that top half. And Cleveland, who's the fourth overall offense in the league. So that definitely plays a part as to why teams have been able to score so much. Once again, I do think the Dallas Cowboys offense is as bad as it's ranked. But don't think that the Giants could do what these other teams have done. Because these other teams offensively are simply way better than we are. And if there's any game that the offense has to show out and that Jason Garrett needs to prove that he's not a scrub and that he could prove that he could call some plays and I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm low key giving him benefit of the doubt because now that four games are over, you know what? Those four games were the preseason for this team to get its, you know, stuff together for the offense to figure out what's up. Jason Garrett has to now call the best game of his career, man. You're going up against your former team already, bam, revenge game. You should know this team inside and out, Garrett. But also, you should open up our offense a little bit more. I did see the offense get a little bit more complex, look a little bit more like what I expected it to in the second half of that Rams game when the running game got going. So because of how bad the run defense of the Cowboys is, hopefully our rushing attack will get going and hopefully Garrett will open up the playbook a little bit more, call a little bit more down the field shots, scheme his receivers open a bit more because Darius Slane, even in week four, was still not used as much as I wanted him to be used and was still misused a little bit in this. This is the game where Jason Garrett has to really come up and show out. Offensive line, please do protect DJ from the Marcus Lawrence and these guys on the defensive line. The offensive line, the Giants recovered in, you know, their abysmal performance from week three in terms of pass protection. Uh, please run block, you know what I'm saying? You got to get past these guys in the um, the linebacking core like Jalen Smith, who really, because Van Der Esch is out, is the only linebacker we should be truly worried about. And I'm looking at this Cowboys secondary, despite the fact that they're, you know, their passing defense isn't trash, this secondary can be taken advantage of. I don't want to jinx anything, you know? I'm looking at dudes like Awuzie and Diggs. They got Xavier Woods back there as usual. I mean, nothing too strong about this secondary now, Giants. You know, this is something you should be able to take advantage of. But like I said, until it actually happens, I'm not gonna call it to happen. I would very much love to say the Giants win this game because I do believe if we win this game, we're beating the Washington football team the week after and we, we could possibly beat the Eagles the week after that and then bam, all of a sudden we're three and four, but that's just wishful thinking. Until we beat the Cowboys, especially with this current team, which is I like the way it's going, I like the way that it's progressing, especially coming off of last week. Until I see it happen, I can't call it. For that reason, I do have the Cowboys winning here, but it's going to be really, really close. I got the Cowboys winning 21 to 16. Yeah, that's right, 16. I know I didn't even get to give my bowl predictions during the game. It's because honestly, I don't really have any. I think this is going to be a very equally matched game more so than people think. But hopefully the Giants can prove me wrong and pull out a win here. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys all think. Maybe put your bowl predictions in there. That's it for now. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.